Insecure Cafe in four, three. What's up? It's your girl Kia, and welcome back to the Insecure Cafe, where we are going over episode nine, Loki Trying. We are one episode away from the season finale, and I feel like these episodes have flown by. But before we get the conversation started, let me invite a few of my favorite people, Dr. Jen Dobson. Hi, good morning. How are you? We are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And the super producer, Shalette. Good morning, everybody. Let's get into it. And she ain't never said none but a word. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first three minutes of the episode were basically all of us. <laughs> I'm looking at Dr. Jim. A little hot and steamy. It was just a little hot and steamy. We are, look, we are watching Issa and Lawrence, you know, get back in the groove of things, of the hanging out and the silent moments and the making love, literally getting in the groove of things. You know, Jen, you take it away. Okay. Look, the first three minutes, I was like, oh, wait, let me get some popcorn. This is ridiculous. It was amazing. It reminded me of the reason why I love Lawrence in the first place. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Shalette. <laughs> there was a lot of love making. It was almost like, you know, they were catching up for lost time. Um, and, and like, it, like you are, are in a new relationship with someone you really, really like. So they, I mean, clearly they really like each other still. And I enjoyed every minute of it. I thought it was beautiful. Lawrence's booty was beautiful. Gotta say it. Gotta <laughs> say it. it so. no, he, 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 he was, he, he was doing very well in the scene. And I, I, I don't know if anybody agrees with this, but Issa, seemed more comfortable now having sex with him than she did in season one, the couple times they showed in season one. Now they seem like they're actually like doing it together. It's just not one person involved. So I actually appreciated that. And to move away from the sex part, she mm -hmm. admitted that Nathan is still around, which I appreciated her honesty. Nathan is still around. We're still friends. I'm going to help him move. Now, I'm glad she was honest, but did she need to be honest considering her and Lawrence are not even a thing? They haven't even, they can't even say it out loud that they are. Did she have to be honest? No. Gillette? Yes! Oh, yes! Okay. Here we go. Here yes. we go. Here we go. No. No. Okay. Okay, so why no, Jen? Dr. Jen, tell me why no. So quick, quick, quick answer. <laughs> because of the fact that they're not in a relationship, they're not in a relationship. She, and yes, I know that she cheated, but she doesn't owe him anything right now. She does and not owe. Let, him. Why do you say yes? They're not officially in a relationship, but they had a past relationship that had a broken, a broken um, experience in it. So, in order for her to, um, you know, establish a level of trust. Uh, you know, that Lawrence will have an Issa, she, she needs to, you know, kind of like put everything out um, in the open for him so that they can make a decision together as a couple about what they want to do in the future. And, you know, maybe this Nathan guy is a good friend, even though he's still trying to smash. But still, um, I thought it was very responsible and very mature of her. Look, he about to move to San Francisco and leave her behind. He ain't worried about Issa like okay, that. Okay, wait, stop. Before we go there, I'm in between both of you. I think it was very, very responsible that she told him, but that ain't none of his business. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. So now we get to Molly in therapy, which of all the people we know on any TV show, Molly needs therapy the most, and Dr. Rhonda is reading Molly for Phil. She literally looks at this girl and says, okay, so everybody around you's in the wrong or out of line at one point. So do you want to be right or do you want to be in a relationship? And that is, I think, a key question that everybody needs to ask themselves. Like, Molly, why do you have to be right every single time? How are you the one perfect and everyone else is messed up? Shalette? Right. No, I, I mean, I wish I had this therapist in my life because, you know, you need somebody to kind of like just knock some sense into you. Like, in your, I mean, she, Molly is so self-centered that she like, she coaches this woman looking for some sort of affirmation for her just you know foul behavior and this woman you know she had to check her like her like a mom would and i'm glad she did it she needed it jen 
Yeah, she definitely did. But I think a, a good question that the therapist asked was like, does she still like, does she still feed you? You know, does she still, does Issa still provide some type of purpose in your life? And if she doesn't, then it's okay if y'all are no longer friends. But then Molly came back and like, well, she's my best friend. Well, you sure enough don't act like she's your best friend. So I don't, if she needed to hear it. But I don't think Molly's listening because Molly's narcissistic, so. I agree. And I think that the reason maybe why the therapist didn't ask that question is because she knew she was going to get some BS answer from Molly. Because does Issa feed Molly? Yes. She feeds Molly's ego. She feeds Molly's narcissism and all that kind of stuff. But that's not good for therapy. What do you want to say, Shalep? Can we also just um, hearken back to uh, seasons one uh, towards the end, whatever, or I'm making it be, it could be one or two, whenever Molly and Issa were getting into it. And Issa was like, you need to talk to somebody. So like Molly wouldn't even be in therapy had it not been for Issa. Very true. So, so they, she leaves therapy and Molly and Issa go and sit down and have brunch or a light skin brunch as she liked to call it with the mostly champagne and just a smidge of orange juice. And I don't know about you, but you all, I knew they weren't going to have a real conversation. I knew once the mimosa started flowing, it was going to go back to silliness, goofiness, crazy, like the same vibe they normally have. They were never going to have the real conversation they were going to have. Do not agree, Jen. Yeah. Yeah. They, they weren't going to, and, and honestly, I don't think maybe that was the right time. Maybe it was a good, good chance for them to just like lighten the air for the first meet and greet and then maybe go in depth a little bit more the second time around, you know, cause it was kind of nice for them to just sit down, have a conversation, remember how much of friends they were. And then maybe the next time say, okay, well let's meet up again. And like, maybe we can talk a little more. So I thought it was smart, but Molly came in prepared to not really say anything. And she kind of only spoke when she was spoken to. It was weird. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't really notice that, but yeah. So I'm going to put things out of order on my list of things. How long do we think that Andrew was going to put up with Molly? Because it makes absolutely no sense to me that this boy's brother who you had a beef with is trying to give you the olive branch and you don't even want to accept it. If you want to be with this man, how long do you think this can go on? I mean, we, I have in-laws. Me and my brother-in-law have not always gotten along. Me and my brother-in-law have cussed each other out to the high heavens. But at the end of the day, that's still family. You still, it's still my brother-in-law. I'm still going to ride or die for him regardless. So Shalette, can she, she can't keep this up, but it's not fair to Andrew, right? She, she can keep it up because it's Molly and she's just a self-centered person. Like, I don't understand how you don't see that this, this man, you know, he has this family that you need to try to get along with. And if you are trying to literally pit him, you know, you between his brother, he's always going to pick his, pick his family. What are you doing? So it's just dumb. She's stupid and selfish. That's it. And she said something to me that I did not like. She's like, why are you always trying to put me in uncomfortable situations or situations where I'm going to be uncomfortable? Well, girl, how do you think he feels showing up to an event where his brother invited both of you and you just, he just shows up by himself? That's not uncomfortable? That's right. not uncomfortable. And relationships is about sometimes doing things that you're not comfortable doing because your partner wants you to do them. Like sometimes you have to, to, to bend and Molly is unbendable. She is she's like, like, she's like unless, she's, unless she's naked. So now we move on to, yes, yes. <laughs> so now we get to the Nathan and Nathan and Issa scene. Nathan moves into his new apartment. Issa comes and help. I hated her jumpsuit, by the way. I did not like that velvet. I didn't, I don't like it. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But he starts to kind of want to get close to her, but she's going out of her way to be awkward and uncomfortable and like, you're just my homeboy. What up, dude? Hey, how you doing? Whatever. And it, it sounds ridiculous. But she starts, she was honest with him about getting back with Lawrence. And to me, his digs back were completely unnecessary given that he's a new dude who kind of ghosted her. Jen, Gillette. I, I, I liked it. I thought he was real and he was like, yo, you done told me about this Negro and now you back with him? Huh. Okay. On top of the fact that 
you know, yes, he, he kind of left her, but he left her for a reason. He was trying to get his mental in place, you know? And I think now that, that Issa knows that, I think she, she has to respect that, you know, and it probably is going to put them in a different position down the road. We'll see what happens. Well, what I, I can't remember the name of the showrunner right now. It's, it, the name escapes me. It's Penny something, but yeah, Penny. Pen, well, it's, it, it rhymes. Yeah, it, it escapes me. But he said in the wind down after the show is that, you know, guys are always, guys don't know how to compliment like your new boo. It's just never going to happen. They, they, they're they all going to be like, oh, but he mad corny or something like that. Oh, he can't dress. There's always going to be something yes. that the guys will bring up to, you know, make themselves feel better yeah. um, than, than the new boo. So that's, that's really just natural. I am glad he was honest about his mental health, but again, I feel like he should have been honest as soon as it happened. I know being honest about your mental health in the black community is something extremely hard. He didn't want to get called crazy. I get it, but I feel like Issa is the type of person that would have stayed by his side and would have supported yes. him if he was if he was honest about what he was going through. So True. I don't know who she's going to choose. I don't know if Lauren's moving back to San Francisco. I don't know, but let's arrive to the big moment. And I have a lot to say about this, so I'm going to make it quick, but we get to Nathan and Issa pop up at the house to get the rest of the boxes. Molly is, is being Molly, and Andrew was just putting up with it. it. It's so annoying and frustrating to me watching them interact. But they end up staying down to eat and, and having a great time, and Molly accidentally texts saying, I'm trying with Issa. I think she did that accidentally on purpose, and I know she'll let and everybody gets what I want to say. But what I'm, the main thing that I, I noticed with Molly is that she does not like the fact that Issa can move in any space. She may be awkward, she may be weird, but she does not like the fact that Issa can sit down with any group of people, be herself, yeah. and people gravitate towards that because she's sitting in front of a guy who's not really her boyfriend and, and just her friend and Molly's boyfriend. And they're all just like, oh, that's a cool game. Let's do this. Let's kick it. Let's laugh and joke. And Molly's the odd person out. Again, selfish. <laughs> she didn't. She didn't want. She didn't want Issa there in the first place. Uh, you know, she was kind of over. I think that she felt like she had served her time. That she did good. Now it was time for her to to move on and get out and get out of her house. So, yeah. Again, just selfish. And it was crazy because the whole scene started selfish. Um, he said that they were supposed to eat a different type of food, and she decided that that's not what they were going to have. Oh, okay. She chose something different, and Andrew's like, but I thought we were going to have whatever it was, Thai food or whatever. She's like, no, remember the last time? So I got this, and it's like, what? Like, if when you're in a relationship, those kind of decisions, not all the time, but most of the time should be made together. Like, Babe, you said you wanted Thai food, but, you know, it wasn't very good. So do you mind if I pick this up? So they started off wrong from the beginning. And then, yes, Molly was uncomfortable the whole time. She She's not the center of attention, so she was upset about that. She didn't want to reminisce about, like, it was just all about Molly. So when she came out in text, I don't think she did it on purpose, but subconsciously, yeah, she wanted, she wanted Issa to know, like, I don't really want you here. So, and it was, to me, it was just so mean because I feel like Issa was trying. Like, this is awkward and uncomfortable, but I'm going to make it a happy place. Happy place. And when Molly even ran after her, that was the most half-ass running behind somebody you care about I've ever seen in my life. Like, and then for Molly to be like, okay, well, you know, we're just, we're just over. And it's like, dude, you still don't get it. In that moment, you messed up. You were the one out of line. Mm -hmm. Why weren't you the one saying, oh my God, I'm so, so sorry. I really love you. Like, I know you talk about it. It was none of that. It was just like, we should have talked. We didn't talk. Okay, we're done. Okay, get in your lift and bye. What, what is that? No, I think I'm, I'm really proud of Issa for just standing up for herself, first of all, because Molly is, yes. is clearly the type of friend that would bully her, own, her, her other so-called best friends. I've, I've been on the you know negative side of that experience before. But I honestly think that Molly was surprised. I think her, she, I think she was a little shocked that Issa was like, "All right, then, bye." <laughs> you know, like this is done then. So, um, you know, I I wholeheartedly applaud Issa for standing up for herself. And w I, look, I am going to say something real quick about the clothing choices in this episode. And if you will notice, if you will look at the screen, I watch this on HBO. So. HBO now. So you see all the little um uh screenshots or the um 
the episode graphics for all the episodes, Issa is wearing orange in every single episode of the season. We're going to figure out what this orange means. I don't know what it means. Is it like orange is new to black? Is it caution? Is it some kind of warning sign? Is she in jail? Is she in prison? And then Molly, they said her clothes, they're saying her clothes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like it's literal baggage that she's carrying around with herself. So I had to get that little piece of tea in there. I thought it was really entertaining. Oh my God. I'm in awe of you right now. Like I didn't notice none of that. (laughs) I'm looking at the screen like, what? I'm lo- You're right. Orange in every episode. It's insane. Okay, I I'm, I'm low-key impressed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Yeah. So, I mean, we have one episode left. Um, she will have to choose between Nathan and Lawrence. And I, I really want to see if Andrew is ever going to stand up for himself and stop just going along with the flow because now it's taken away from his sexiness and you just look like a doormat. You look like a doormat. So again, you have time to watch the episode for next week. It's the finale. We want to have this whole room full of people to chit chat with us. So we will catch you next time on the Insecure Cafe. Again, watch the episode, HBO, 10 p.m. See you next time. Bye.